Hello, and welcome to the Relationship Help Show. This is a Q&A tonight, and we're going to be answering one question that came in to us earlier. It came in to me earlier, and then you're open to ask your own questions, too. And who am I? I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler, and you can find more about me at forrelationshiphelp.com. I'm known as the Relationship Help Doctor, and I work with individuals and couples and companies worldwide to help people collaborate. And that's what we need to do in our relationships, to learn to collaborate. I do have a specialty, and that is working with the partners, the exes, the adult children, and the co-workers of what I call chronically difficult people. These are the people, you know them, these are the people who are always right, they need to win, they can't be wrong, you are always wrong. It's an eternal confrontation. And you get smaller all the time while they try to get bigger. And they are what I call hijackals. And my definition of a hijackal is a person who hijacks relationships for his or her own purposes while relentlessly scavenging them for power, status, and control. And if you think you may be with a chronically difficult person, somebody who is often that way, you can go to hijackals.com and download my free ebook, How to Spot a Hijackal. And you'll know the difference then between people who are momentarily difficult and people who are chronically difficult. So please be sure to go there. And it, when you're at relationship, for relationshiphelp.com, you'll find my blog, you'll find links to my YouTube, you'll find so many free resources for you there lots of things to get you started and as i said my youtube channel is at for relationship help so that's easy to remember so jumping right in a, a listener wrote a question and you can do that too uh, if you want to ask a question uh, ahead of the show you can send a question to blab at for relationship help.com and i will be sure to answer it on air so that you can join into the show when your topic comes up and talk with me on air, or you can go and listen to the replay and get your answer that way. So here's the question from a, a listener. My partner is always blaming me. Nothing is ever my partner's fault, even when it clearly is. What's going on? What do I do about it? Can this relationship be saved? Well, we don't like to be blamed, do we? Nobody likes to be blamed. And there's a difference between being blamed and actually doing something that you ought not to have done. <laughs> Many people will blame you because they don't want to take the blame themselves. So they'll be proactive and they'll blame you before they can possibly be blamed. But it gets into a cycle and a habit in some relationships. And often that becomes a pattern repeating so frequently that the person, and I'm sure the person who wrote this question, came to the conclusion that they were never going to be in a partnership. Because when one partner is always blaming, you can't be equal. It's not possible, is it? So blaming then deteriorates the relationship. And of course, it all always diminishes the self-esteem of the person being continually blamed. But this person has come to a point where he or she, I don't know which it was, um, said, I don't want this anymore. This is just not all right with me. So what do I do? So I'm going to give you a few ideas. First of all, I want to entertain the notion of a hijackal. Because if you're with a chronically difficult person, a hijackal, you are going to be blamed. You're going to be blamed for everything at all times. There is no end in sight. They can't possibly be wrong. A hijackal is a person who, from their upbringing and, and things that have happened to them, various traumas that they experienced, whether or not other people experience them as traumas is immaterial, they experienced them as traumas. They became very, very protective of themselves, very concerned with their own survival. 
and therefore they develop some patterns and habits that keep everybody away. And it's like they have two walls constantly in motion, keeping them protected. One is called offense, the other is called defense. And when you have those two walls keeping you safe, that's to make sure that nothing can pierce that. And for a hijackal, what actually is so is they have very, very fragile self-esteem, very fragile egos. So they know intuitively and instinctually that if anything came through those walls, it would shatter them. So they are constantly on guard, constantly hypervigilant, constantly keeping all blame away from them. So if the person who wrote in happens to be with a hijackal, that's a different answer than it would be when you just sort of feel like blame comes too frequently. Hijackals don't have the ability to empathize with you. They know how to put on the appearance of empathy because they practice things like that. They watch how people do it and they mimic it. But that mimicking is not the same thing as being empathetic. And that may have some meaning to you too. So let's just talk about hijackals and blame first, and then I'll answer the question for others in a minute. When you're with a hijackal, that person has to win. They have to win in every moment in order to feel safe. And although it feels terribly much like they're doing it to you, they're not. They're doing it for themselves so that they can feel safe. If you were not to blame, then they might have to consider that they were, and that's just too much for them. Now, I certainly advocate compassion, but I advocate a kind of compassion that I've written about, and I call it inclusive compassion. So much of our culture tells us to take care of other people, to be concerned about other people, to think about other people first, to do for other people before you do for yourself. So many things. And we become a culture to doing that and thinking that that's what good people do. Always have compassion for other people. I think we need to expand that definition to inclusive compassion. Have the compassion for others, but have compassion for yourself as well. That will keep you from feeling like you're supposed to turn into a doormat or, in fact, becoming one. If you are a people pleaser by nature, and don't, don't fret, we all were. Remember, when we were born, we're not like cows and horses. We don't get spit out of our mother, licked off, and then we jump up and run around the meadow. We come equipped knowing that we cannot survive without those giants. So we learn very early on how to be people pleasers. And we practice that a lot when we're young. And the things that happen to us to help us individuate and stop doing that can be very, very healthy for us. And usually the adults in our life at that time don't appreciate it very much. So some of us don't individuate to the point where we stop the people pleasing. Now, people pleasers are ideal bait for a hijackal, ideal prey, because they say, ah, this person really wants to make me happy. They'll do anything to make me happy. And and I call that hadar. They have hadar, <laughs> hijackal radar, um, for people who, who will do that, who will constantly want to make them happy. And so that's a, a very difficult combination. And you will find over time that all of the polite veneer, all of the beautiful, um, really understanding you and feeling you feel so special, you feel so known, you feel so taken care of and madly in love. So that starts to fade as you get blamed more and more and more. And why are you being blamed? Because the hijackal cannot accept blame. Therefore, they will not accept blame. So if you happen to be in that circumstance, you really need to read the How to Spot a Hijackal. Make sure that you do. Go to hijackals.com and uh, get download that free ebook. You also, once you find out you're with a hijackal, you would be really well advised to take that exploration deeper. I've written a couple of books on hijackals and the hijackal trap. You can find them at Amazon. One is a book for called The Hijackal Trap, 
and it's the passive aggressive edition. So it's how to deal with people who are passive aggressive. There is now a brand new ebook up in Amazon called Escaping the Hijackle Trap, Volume One. It's going to be several volumes. And in this first one, it's an in depth look at the truth about hijackles and why they're crazy making. And at the end of June or so, we'll have the second one, which is hijackle handling strategies. So if you do find yourself in a situation where you're being blamed all of the time, except when they really want something, then you may be with a hijackle, and that's something that you need to know, or someone with hijackle traits. Now, if you're in a relationship with someone who just, just is ornery, just angry a lot, just fearful and can't imagine being blamed for anything, um, that, that's a little bit different story. In the hijackle situation, it is never a good strategy to try and put the blame back on them because that just can't be managed by them. But when you're with someone who is not a person with hijackle traits, then it's really good to have an honest conversation about how you feel. Now, when I wrote the book Kaizen for Couples, um, Smart Steps to Save, Sustain, and Strengthen Your Relationship, I put in there the second most valuable thing that I think I can teach anyone. And that is what I call the personal weather report. You know, we've had a lot of learning over time. You know, I remember 30 years ago and I was in corporate training and the big news was iMessages. So when you had some something you wanted to say to someone, you put it in an iMessage. And basically an iMessage said, I feel this way when you do that. Okay. That's just veiled blame. <laughs> and that didn't go down very well with me. I wanted something different. So I developed the personal weather report. And it's very simple. You don't talk about anybody else. You don't impu impute motive to anyone else. And you make no assumptions about anyone else. What you do with a personal weather report is because you are an emotional growing up, you know what you think, what you feel, what you need, and what you want. And you can say so without ever saying the word you, without ever pinning it on anybody else. It is simply, here's what's going on within me. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what I'm needing. Here's what I'm wanting. And because it never says the word you, it is just telling someone where you're at at the moment. So when blame comes at you, you might, if you felt this way, you might say, well, I, I feel really um, curious as to where that idea came from. And I think it's maybe something worth having a conversation about. And I want to figure this out. So I really feel that um, I need to get to the bottom of it and soon. And then you let that lie there and see if the other person picks it up and how they respond. When you get good at that, and there are two whole chapters in the book Kaizen for Couples, it's at Amazon too, two chapters, one on how to give an accurate and effective personal weather report, and this, the other chapter is how to respond to one. Very important skills for couples, very important skills for all of us. So if you're feeling blamed, you need good communication skills but you need the willingness to communicate. You need to feel strong enough within yourself that you can speak up and say, I, you know, I'm hurting over here, or that doesn't feel very good, or in fact, I did not do that, and become assertive. You know, I give a, a free webinar on uh, why you should become more assertive and how to do it, so watch for that. Um, again, you can go to for relationship help or hijackles.com and you can sign up for my newsletter. So you'll always know when those things happen. So blame. It doesn't feel good to have it coming at us. So therefore, it doesn't feel wise for it to be going from us. So if we don't like something coming at us, make sure it doesn't go out from you. Now, what to do further? You sit down and say, I didn't do that wait to see what happens if it escalates with oh yes you did and here's why respond only to the facts not to the emotion now I know that's a tall order 
because we want to get right in there and say, no, I didn't. And how dare you? And things like that. But that won't give you an effective outcome. It's not an effective strategy to get a good outcome, I guess I should say. So take the time to, to stay with your assertion that I did not do that. And, and see what the other person does. And then as they continue to blame, look for the facts alone. What happened? When did it happen? Who was present? What time of day was it? Which day was it? Who was in the room? Look for the facts. Because it's so simple to get it between you, like a bone between two dogs. And you don't want to do that because you're just going to have a, a confrontation and an unnecessary conflict that then we'll have to solve the problems that happen in that conversation before we can ever solve the problems of blame. Where we want to get to in conversations with somebody that we really care about is not putting it between us and tearing at it, but to sit down together put it on the wall and say, we have that problem over there. How shall we fix it? That's a very different approach, isn't it? Because we didn't learn that often in our homes or up to date. We are still feeling defensive. And when we're feeling defensive and someone else is blaming, it's a really poor converse, uh, combination. Makes sense, right? So these things are extremely important for you to consider. And I hope that you will, because you are in charge of your life. You are 100% in charge of teaching people how to treat you. And if someone is constantly blaming, as this person who asked the question has a partner who does, then that relationship really needs relationship help. The Gottman Institute did some uh, research, and what they found out is a couple usually has a problem for up to six years before they get help with it. Don't be those people. Your relationship is far too important, and so are you. Get help as soon as a problem becomes a chronic problem. If it's been brought up more than five times, it's time to get some help. Now, one of the things that I do is I offer a free half-hour consultation, and you'll see that at for relationship help uh, under the, the navigation tab, get help from Dr. Shaler. So there's lots there for you, and I hope this helped you to understand that you don't have to put up with being blamed all the time. A, if you're with a hijackal, find out you need special strategies. And B, if you're not with a hijackal, become assertive and learn how to be more assertive. You're never going to be in trouble when you're assertive, but you will always be in trouble when you're aggressive. I look forward to talking with you soon. Thanks for dropping by and be sure to tune in, subscribe down below here so that the next time there's a relationship help show, a Q&A or otherwise, you will be the first to know.